Anybody who goes to sea in a kayak is bound to be running some sort of a risk. He therefore must make sure that he has done everything correctly for such a journey before he starts. First of all, he will have told the Coast Guards of his planned trip. He will also be fully prepared himself in his clothing to keep him warm. He will be wearing a buoyancy aid or a life jacket, preferably the latter. He will have a hat to keep his head warm or to keep the sun out of his eyes, a spray deck to go over the cockpit to keep the water out, and below decks, in waterproof bags, he will have a change of clothing, some food, and essentially some distress signals for use should he become ill or find himself unexpectedly swimming in rough water. Our party of three canoeists, having left their little bay, have found themselves joining a much bigger party who have a canoe lifeguard in their company. In going round the next headland, where there is a slight race, one of them capsizes, can't roll up, so has to get out. What's to be done? It is close in shore, the water is quite smooth, and the party rally round to help him. This is where the lifeguard takes charge. He gathers a few others round him, through instructing the others to raft up and wait. Once the unfortunate is back in his canoe, the party can come together again and discuss their further progress. I mentioned the Coast Guards. If you've told them about your journey, they will be keeping a weather eye and ear open on your progress. Should one of them see any signal out to sea which he thinks should at least be investigated, he will call out an appropriate arm of the rescue services. In this case, he will call out a helicopter from the nearby RAF station. Here is a red smoke, which is quite the best form of easily portable signal for canoeists to use by day. The best thing to start with, in fact, is a hand maroon, which will make a deafening bang and make everybody turn around and look. First, though, you will probably have to use them when you are swimming, as I mentioned earlier. So in our tests, we did just that. To be of real use, the signal should burn for at least half a minute, the two-star red does not really last long enough for people on shore to see it, mark its position and react. This red flare is for use by night and is the equivalent flare by night as to the smoke by day. The day and night signal is a military signal which may be all right for them but doesn't really last long enough for us. It has a smoke lasting about a quarter of a minute by day and a flare for use by night but a quarter of a minute is too short. Here is the helicopter going out to sea on the Coast Guard's report. He finds a party of canoeists in disarray, waiting for the arrival of help. The red smoke is very obvious. But another signal which you might have is a green dye which you can spread on the sea, and this is very visible from the helicopter. It is not so much use from the land point of view, looking along the water, but it is highly visible from above and will quickly guide the helicopter towards you. But you must get yourselves organised. It is no good being scattered all over the sea like this. Who requires to be rescued? You must set up some sort of an arrangement, and one of the best is to make a raft. When the helicopter comes over you, there is a violent downdraft, which is quite likely to knock you over if you're alone. In a raft, you will be able to hold each other up, and anybody who is used to the helicopter can look after the others. Here is another group of canoeists scattered all over the place. Again, who is to be rescued? The raft, 
raft must be firmly held together so that the helicopter's downdraft doesn't interfere with them, except that the spume kicked up by the wind hits you and will sting your bare face. Here's another raft, with the helicopter's wind quite obviously blowing the spume about, hurting any bare part of you it can find. A two-canoe raft is a possibility, but be really the best raft has three canoes. In this case, the one who has fallen sick is in the middle. and when the winchman drops from the helicopter, he will come down onto the raft if he can, where he has a good platform to sit on while he deals with the patient. The moment the winchman arrives, he takes full charge and everybody does exactly as he tells them to. On the, this occasion, he has landed on the water, and at about knee depth, he will give signals to the helicopter crew above as to how he is to be taken to the canoes. If the patient is still in his canoe, well, he'll have to be got out. If the canoe rescue team have had to drag him out of the water, he can be laid across the foredecks of the kayaks so that the canoeists can continue to look after him and the winchman can call upon their assistance in getting the patient comfortably up into the helicopter. In this two kayak raft, the winchman has arrived in the sea and is putting the patient into the sea before lifting him. That leaves an empty canoe to be looked after with the canoeist remaining to look after it. Here again the patient is in the water if it is possible to keep the patient out of the water, he is less likely to get cold and so go down with hypothermia. Here you've seen him across the four decks of the canoes, with the winchman having a much easier time. Getting onto the raft. Sorting the patient out. putting the strop over him and getting him upstairs. Sometimes the lifeguard may have had to get into the water with the patient to give him EAR or something else while he holds onto the bows of the raft. Now the winchman will arrive there he will tell the lifeguard what he has to do. This time he has told him to leave go of the raft so that he can deal with the patient in open water. Maybe the lifeguard will be told to keep with the raft when the winchman will go right up to it and sort the patient out there. The winchman has complete control and his instructions must be obeyed. After that, the people on the water can begin to sort themselves out again. Another drill is to make the party form the letter H on the water with their canoes, facing exactly up into the wind, with the lifeguard and the patient in the water on the crossbar of the H, whilst one of the party takes his canoe in tow. This is very clearly visible from above, And here you can see the helicopter dropping the winchman onto the pair in the water, with the two leading arms of the H on either side and well out of the way of the helicopter's downdraft. Now the winchman has taken the patient away from the lifeguard and will give the signal to be lifted into the helicopter. Watch the winchman uh, in the bottom of the picture. 
There's the signal, and up they come. But what if the helicopter searches out a lone man far out to sea? Firstly, the pilot has to be careful, trying not to blow him over with the downdraft. Then the winchman will do his best to get the person out of his canoe and into the strop without his getting wet. Remember what we said about hypothermia. But this drill is not at all easy. And some winchmen prefer to get the chap into the water, as we shall see. In this case, the, winch the patient has only got his feet wet, and up they go. But this winchman has preferred to get the chap into the water. Away from the entanglement of the kayak, which makes his job that much more easy, and that way to pick him up and out. But remember about hypothermia. And so back goes the lifeguard into his canoe, while up goes the winchman and the patient into the helicopter to take him wherever it is necessary. Now the party are coming together again. You can see the empty lifeguard canoe in the distance. The lifeguard is presumably there somewhere in the water and the rest are assembling to help him get back in. After that the party can decide what they should do next. But do remember that if you are going to do this kind of work you must be properly and fully equipped you must know the rules and drills of the game and be properly uh, trained into them. <laughs>